Okay, hey guys. So in my last video that I posted, which was my I'm back slash plant updates video, I mentioned that some of my plants are not doing too well and this is going to be a separate video talking about those plants. It's actually not that many. I have like four or five written down, but I just wanted to show them to you, share with you what's going on, um, and then try to give them some care to get them back on track. Um, so, so we'll do that. But first I just wanted, oh, she's making a nest. Nesty pie, good girl. Yeah. Um, uh, but first I just wanna talk a little bit about how I'm feeling um, or how like my plants looking like crap has been making me feel. I mean, I feel like it's on top of me having a rough couple of weeks and then it's like plus some of my plants are declining and normally it's not something I would get upset about well that's kind of a lie I think it really depends on the plant because some plants I'm just like very relaxed about like if something happens I'm just like okay we'll either like you know chop and start over or when I had like the whole thrip thing I let I let a few plants go and I was fine with that but then there are some plants that are just like really special to me that I've put a lot of time and energy into growing out and that I've just been really proud of so when those plants decline that really freaking sucks. So that did happen with one of my probably my plant that I have been like the proudest of and that is of course my El Choco Red so I guess I'll just start with that one. Oh. It's looking so much worse. Like every day it just looks worse, which really sucks. Um, just wait, I'm gonna put my battery charger on. Um, okay. Yeah, when this plant, well, you guys probably saw a couple of videos ago, I posted a video repotting this plant and it was looking a little sus, but I do this thing where when I, when a plant is looking like it's like declining a little bit, I just kind of hope for the best. Like I don't do anything right away and I just kind of hope for the best. And sometimes that works out for me, like whatever it is just improves. And sometimes it doesn't and it wasn't at all. Um, the plant was just kind of looking worse. So I decided to uh, unpot it and check out the root system. The root system was just like very, it looked quite unwell. It was just like very like stringy and thin roots. Um, I think that this plant dried out too much and combined with the like transition out of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet, it just was not good. Um, so it's in two pieces now. This is the top cutting, which it still has this big beautiful leaf, which, oh my goodness, I love this leaf so much. Like I'm so proud of this, you guys. It's so sad that this has happened. But this is the leaf that had the yellowing happening, which is what prompted me to investigate. And now I have that leaf, which is like completely yellow now, which it was not before. Um, so that's happened within like the past few days. Oh, it's so like paper thin too. Like the leaf, the leaf just doesn't feel, you can feel when a leaf is like hydrated and healthy. And this plant just does not feel good. Um, so I have one, two, three, four leaves on this top cutting and I originally, okay, so I unpotted this and I didn't even film it. I did this like, I did an emergency unpot at like 8.30 p.m. one night. I did take some photos, so I'll put those on the screen, but it took me so long to get this off of the moss pole. It was so rooted. It actually had like quite a root system just from growing into the moss. Um, so originally I had both of these cuttings. I'll show you the other one. This is the smaller, this was the bottom, I think. Well, not the very bottom, the very bottom like chunk. I tried my best to clean up and it's in my perlite prop box now. I don't know if anything's gonna grow from it, but I, I just decided to do that rather than tossing it. And then this was like, I guess a mid cut is what it technically would be. And this is in perlite and sphagnum because again, it just, it had, a bit of a root system. I don't know if anything, if any roots, like I can't really tell what's going on. It's just like perlite and sphagnum. But yeah, eventually this, I had this in the same. I did a perlite and sphagnum kind of situation because I couldn't pull all the sphagnum off of the roots or I didn't want to. I didn't want to disturb it too much. 
Um, so I just kind of left the roots and then added some perlite and sphagnum to a container and had it in there. But it just kept declining, you guys. So a couple of days ago, I ended up um, completely cutting off the roots and putting it into water with a drop of Super Thrive. So obviously nothing's grown yet because... Did I just do this last night? It was either last night or the day before. I think it's been two days, perhaps, um, that it's been in water. But yeah, I could even clean this up some more. There's like little, little peely pieces. But yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing happening yet. Um, really hoping that this is going to root for me. Like, if I lose this whole thing, I'm not gonna be happy. I'm just not gonna be happy. I'm already not happy about this situation. Um, but yeah. That's what's been going on with my El Choco Red. This plant was a plant, this is like my biggest philodendron that I have and I feel like I put so much time and energy into like trying to grow my philodendrons to be large and like spend time maintaining moss poles and just like, I don't know, trying to give them really good conditions and I feel like I don't see a lot of payoff. Maybe I'm just feeling negative because my plants like haven't been doing the best lately or some of them haven't been doing the best and I like on Instagram and YouTube you're just like bombarded with people's like big huge massive healthy beautiful plants and I'm just like what the heck like why why can I not grow plants like that but the thing is a lot of the times I'm comparing myself to people who live like across the world in sunny places and I just like I'm here in the darkest part of Canada and it's been the darkest spring ever it's so gloomy like even right now this guy's completely gray um and we're like breaking records here for it being such a wet spring so there's not been sun happening there has not been like you know basically i just i'm not dealing with ideal conditions over here right now so maybe that's why my plants are kind of taking a beating i don't know that combined with moving this outside of the greenhouse and like underwatering i feel like that really messed with my watering schedule for a lot of the plants that I take out of the greenhouse it's just like such different conditions that you really have to be on top and like be aware um enough to adjust your watering schedule not that I follow a schedule but you know what I mean I like have I have a sense of how often I need to water a plant um so that's just completely changes once you once you change the conditions but yeah there's I guess there's not really much for me to do for this plant I'm just like chattering to you about it which some of these plants um some of these plants we're actually going to do some care but some of these plants i'm just going to chat about um and show you what's been going on so yeah i don't know if you have any tips or like uh, suggestions for me let me know i did watch videos on youtube oh my girl light's turning off i did watch some videos on youtube about propagating philodendron el choco red um i know a plant friend on the street has some and there's a few other ones that I watched as well. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been a bit down about it just because I feel like I'm going to end up starting over with this plant. And that sucks because I was just like so in awe of when this was putting out massive leaves. Like I'm obsessed with it. So that sucks. But this is just the reality of plant parenthood. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video and share like my thoughts about it because... I don't know, at first I was like, oh, I'm being so dramatic, like it's just a plant, and it is just a plant. Like, I'm not going to freak out or, you know, but but also this is something that I've invested a lot of energy into and that I love, so I'm allowed to be upset about it, you know? And you are too, if like whatever feelings you have about your plants are completely valid, just like, just like your feelings about everything else. So yeah, and I just kind of wanted to normalize people's collections not being perfect because especially on social media we're just bombarded with all these perfect photos like I was saying and it's not always the case and maybe other people are in similar situations like me where you have an apartment that doesn't have great lighting or something like that and you have to kind of like work that much harder to give your plants good growing conditions um it's just like yeah it can be challenging sometimes for sure Okay, I'm going to go get the next one, which is another one that I'm just kind of going to kind of like chat about. Okay, I just had to move over to the Canon because my Sony was doing that glitch thing again, which like, I don't even have the capacity to think about that right now. Don't know why it's doing that again though, it was just repaired. Um, 
Okay, so the next plant that I have to talk about is my Anthurium forgetii, as you can see here. Probably not a surprise either because um, I've been saying for quite some time that this plant has been going downhill. Um, pretty much all, well yeah, all of the leaves on this plant have crisping. Um, now this really started happening again when I moved it outside of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet. And I think that the same thing happened where it kind of messed up my watering schedule or my, like my watering consistency again. And this dried out a bit. So I think that that's definitely contributed to a lot of the crispiness, especially on this leaf, which is the newest leaf. Um, but this has been out of the cabinet. Okay, I just have to tear it off. I'm already going in on it. Um, this has been outside of the cabinet for, it's kind of satisfying. Oh, oopsies, I ripped it. Okay, we're not gonna do that anymore. We're not gonna do that anymore. Um, why is this chaotic? Oh yeah, this has been outside of the cabinet for a few months now and um, it had not given me a leaf. It's honestly been like, probably like 10 months since my last leaf on this, which was this leaf. I think this, it was like when I moved um, that this leaf was coming in. So it's been quite some time and uh, I've been waiting and waiting for a new leaf. And then finally I started getting one, which is amazing. I will show you the new leaf. Um, well, it's kind of amazing. It's great that there's a new leaf, but the thing that sucks is that it's ripped as you can see there. Um, yeah, this leaf just didn't come in cleanly. It got stuck and um, it just like wouldn't unfurl. So it, it, was start, it was trying to unfurl and then it ended up ripping which really sucks because I was just so excited to finally be getting a new leaf on this and I still am but I'm just like what the heck like why can I and and here's the thing I know a lot of people grow these in regular room humidity and this is often like suggested to people as an anthurium that you can grow outside of a cabinet and it's just like a really easy grower and I don't know what it is with me and anthurium but like they just never seem to do amazing for me um, I think that part of my problem right now is lighting because this doesn't get any artificial light now. This is just near my window and like I said, it's been so dark and dreary out for literally months. So this is probably not getting adequate lighting. I think that that is how I'm going to remedy this plant is just move it to a spot where it's going to get a little bit more lighting. Um, I haven't been running my humidifier, so that might help as well once I get that going again. I just need to like set aside time to thoroughly clean it and I'm also waiting for my water filter to come in the mail because somebody commented on my video a while ago about how bad it is to be breathing in tap water in a humidifier and I've always just used tap water in my humidifier. Um, and we have good quality tap water where I am. That's why I just use plain tap water for everything. Like I've never filtered my water in my life. Um, so this will be new, but uh, it's just gonna like remove everything from the water. So there's not gonna be like micro sediments or whatever in the air that I'm breathing in. Um, anyways, I don't know how, I don't know how big of a deal it actually was. Like I wasn't getting any, any like mineral buildup or anything on my plants. So maybe it was fine. But of course it just like got in my brain and I was like, okay, I'm, I don't want to be buying distilled water because I just like can't commit, first of all, I can't commit to that. And second of all, I don't want to be buying all that plastic. Um, so I figured that the next best thing for me would just be to get a water filter. So I ordered one that goes on my faucet. So I'm going to be getting that and then cleaning my humidifier and getting it going again. And I also got like new filters for my humidifier. I don't know, it just like got in my brain <laughs> that I was breathing in something unwell. Um, so yeah, and I always have my humidifier going and like I sleep next to it and stuff. So I just want it to be like, you know, good, clean water in there. Anyways, side tangent. Um, but even without my humidifier going, the humidity is like 50%. Like right now it's 56% in my living room without anything just because of where I live. So, um, I don't think it's humidity for this guy. I think it's probably light. If you have one, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do have Anthurium forgetii because it's one of the more common Anthurium, um, let me know what type of condi conditions you grow it in, especially if you grow it uh, outside of a cabinet or a greenhouse or a tent or anything. Um, yeah, just let me know because I feel like I just need to change up some of the growing conditions for this guy. Maybe it needs to be repotted as well. Like it's pretty 
it's definitely i mean the good thing is i can see that it has a lot of roots so i know it's not rotted um which rot is like my nemesis right now because of my el choco i remember a long time ago like one of my first in the first like I don't know six months of me making plant videos on youtube i remember asking in a repot if people would rather have pests or rather have root rot and almost everybody said pests they or no sorry almost everybody said root rot um and i agreed i was like yeah pests are the worst but i feel like once a plant has root rot there's a much higher probability of you just completely losing that plant like if my el joko had pests right now maybe i would lose a leaf or two but i could treat it and it would probably be fine but root rot it's like are those roots ever gonna grow back am i just gonna lose the whole plant i don't know like i feel like it's just a lot riskier and and yes it's like better because it doesn't spread to other plants but yeah it's just like very very destructive when you do have something like root rot um Okay, my phone is ringing now my goodness okay so if you've been here for a while then you may know can i move this a little bit closer then you may know that my hoya bellas my variegated ones i have the inner and the outer variegated i no longer have an all green one which is very sad because that hoy is amazing it blooms so readily it grows so well and i've had nothing but headache with the variegated ones so I don't know i've never really been able to figure out what's wrong with these but they just they just don't grow well the leaves always just look kind of like weird and they will fall off okay we have to be patient with this camera focusing um they always just come in like kind of misshapen they're looking a bit better than they used to but um the leaves just never really look great like i don't know if you can tell they just they just look weird so i want to take these apart and um check out the roots make sure everything is all good on the roots that's always like my first um thing that i want to do if a plant is not looking great and i've never done that for these i've done a couple other things like i've treated them for pests um but i've never i've never checked on the roots so that's what we're gonna do and then i think i'm actually going to pot these together because i've always just wanted to kind of consolidate them so that it's just one plant just to save space and i don't know i think it's kind of cool to have both types in one pot so that's what i'm gonna do but first of all let's just unpot both of them okay so this one which is in a tiny little terracotta pot which is so annoying i hate these little pots i don't know why i plant anything in them oh my gosh okay <laughs> very minimal minimal roots here and that's probably because everything dries out so much in those tiny pots like they're so hard to keep up with okay besides the root system being literally tiny that's been in there for like like 10 months and this is <laughs> so tiny these are the roots that i'm working with they seem very dry so I don't know they don't look rotted or anything so that's good but they really seem like they're on the cusp of rotting so i'm glad that we're gonna be getting it out of that terracotta pot now i'm really curious to see what the roots on this bigger one are going to be looking like this one also has a lot more of the dark green um this one is like variegated on the inner so it doesn't have as much dark green um okay oh oh my gosh i think i just ripped something normally these grow like beasts wait what is going on here okay the roots look healthy on this one they do but again just like smaller than i was expecting like why are these having so much trouble growing roots Okay, there's still some sphagnum. That's what's making it look weird. It looked like they were almost in like those little plugs, you know what I mean? But it's not. It just has some sphagnum. Um, huh. I mean, the roots look good on this one. But for some reason, it's just not growing well. Um, give you a close-up on the roots. They look really good. Um, so, what I'm going to do is rinse this out give it a wash and then i'm going to repot both of these back into here 
with fresh potting mix and some mycorrhizae, mycorrhizae that I've been using recently and then give them a spray for pests because yeah that's just like I think gonna be my best course of action just like freshen everything up do a pest treatment and um yeah like I I think maybe it's some type of mite um I had I've had someone comment before that their Hoyas have had these like I don't know if it was a form of spider mite or something but it was like a very very like minuscule mite that you could barely even see might be something like that but I don't know why the other plants in my cabinet would not be affected um these are kind of similar to my Hoya compacta in that the leaves just come out like not looking great and they lose leaves and stuff I don't know what's what it is with these variegated some of these variegated Hoya where the green version is like so hardy and then the variegated one is just difficult um but yeah that's gonna be my my plan of action i think here so i'm going to go give this a wash okay wash my container out with soap and water and i have my potting mix right here and my myco um still have not been using this long enough to have an opinion on it but I mean my gloriosum is doing amazing and that was the first plant that I used it on so I will keep you updated okay I'm just gonna put some potting mix in here and sprinkle some of this on I guess I just ate some homemade mac and cheese um quickly because i'm going for a run after this and i haven't eaten anything in a while and i don't want to be starving okay so i just sprinkled some of that in there somebody also commented on one of my videos like um a few videos ago one where i was repotting oh i think it was when i repotted my variegated compacta and i put some of the mycorrhizae they were saying that they didn't think that it worked for hoya I forget why but they didn't know if it was true they were just like speculating so if anybody knows i mean i'm hoping it works for hoya because i have a lot of hoya um so i guess i'll find out but okay i'm just gonna pot all oh, these two are gonna be so cute together i really hope that they start doing better send your prayers okay i'm gonna move that up a little and fill our I'm really glad that the roots are healthy on both of these because, yeah, I just don't want to be dealing with any more root rot. It's honestly like the worst. Well, thrips are probably the worst, but root rot really sucks too. Okay. I don't know why this one looks so funny the way it's just like hanging out there. okay great um so i will give this a water and i'm going to decide which spray i want to use on it okay so i decided that i'm going to use my end all miticide um it works for other things as well but yeah i actually have not used this in quite a while i used to use this when i would have spider mates i have it mixed up in here so Okay, so I'm just shaking this up and then I'm literally just going to spray the whole plant. This spray bottle is like croaking on me, but it still kind of sprays. It's like a sprinkle, a sprinkle effect. Um, I am going to put the camera down and just quickly make sure I've got the underside of the leaves and everything. You just want to make sure the whole plant is sprayed. I even spray the soil. Okay, I'm just going to let that guy drip dry by the sink for a while and then I'll move him back into the cabinet. But really glad that I potted those both together because I've been wanting to do that for a while and hopefully um, it starts doing better with the soil change and the myco added and the mite, mite spray. I'll probably do that a few more times just to 
just to make sure in case it is some sort of mite situation. Um, but yeah, so we are moving on to the last plant now. Okay, so as you can see, the last plant is my Nepenthes, which I have not shown in a hot minute, just because it hasn't really been doing that well. It hasn't really been doing much at all, um, if I'm honest. And the pictures, this seems to happen to me in the winter time. It happened to me last winter too. But all of the pictures kind of dry off. And this is a fresh new one actually that just came in. However, I was going to add some of my carnivorous fertilizer drops into it. But the pitcher lid is not even like open yet. Like usually that little lid opens up. I guess it just hasn't yet. So I can't really put fertilizer in there. I was thinking I'm gonna snip these ones off. I just basically want to clean this up, give it a trim. It's got a couple yellow leaves and I also just wanted to inspect it. Um, also anybody who grows these, let me know if it's normal for them to like look like crap during the winter. It usually bounces back in the spring, but I'm just like worried something else is going on here. I don't typically suffer with pests, or this plant doesn't usually suffer with pests, but I mean, it's not impossible. Yeah, these yellow leaves, I'm just like not a fan. Gonna have to give them a snippy snip. I can't see anything on it. Yeah, I don't see anything on the leaves. I really don't know much about Nepenthes and pest or even like pest management for them or anything. Like, can I spray them just the same as my other plants? I don't really know. This plant has just kind of been hanging on with me for <laughs> a few years now. Um, actually, I made a care video about this plant like two years ago and it has quite a few views which is kind of funny because this is the plant that I like know the least about in my collection. I mean, I know some things about it, but um, enough. I know the basic care, but anything, anything more beyond than that, I don't really know a lot about. Um, okay, so I guess I'm gonna grab my scissors and then I'm just gonna trim off anything that I don't want to keep on this plant and I guess that'll be it for this one. Um, pretty easy, just needs like, just needs to be cleaned up a bit. These, the leaves are so hard to get off of this too. Like you really have to cut them at the base because they do not pull off. There's so many cool varieties of Nepenthes that you can get. Um, maybe I should put this in my cabinet. Would that be a good idea? I wish I had room. I don't think I have room right now, but maybe once room, once I get some room in one of my cabinets, I'll put it in there. I feel like it would enjoy it. Um, I'm sure that there's people watching this who know way more than I do about carnivorous plants. Is it normal for them to just like lose leaves? Like the leaves are quite a few of them I feel like are yellowing. Like I've cut off, I've cut off quite a few. I, it seems in the past couple of months. Did that one have a picture? No, okay. I think I am gonna cut off this these pictures though. They're just like looking un- Oh, it's spilling its gross stuff. Gosh. Okay. I want to, there's just some like weird old pieces down here that I wanna trim. Um, I've also thought about propagating this because I've never propagated one of these before. And I think you can just take a cutting and propagate it that way. So I'm kind of thinking about doing that. Should I do that? Or should I, I'm gonna try a little bit longer and wait and see how it does. Um, maybe give it a, another month or two and decide if I want to propagate. But I've, I'm kind of tempted. Um, let me know what you think I should do. I'm just gonna cut this. I just hate the yellow leaves. I just hate them. And they just like end up looking worse. So I like to just cut them off. This is not looking great either should i leave this one on though maybe i'll leave that one on for now until it gets more yellow oh i want to cut off this picture too though oh 
this one and the pictures were like coming in deformed i have no idea what causes this carnivorous plant people let me know can you see um how weird this came in like why the hole is like minuscule at the top it just came in all deformed i have no idea what causes this just bizarre um so yeah this plant definitely has not had a great year has not been looking its best not really sure what i should do but for now the little trimmy trim and then once i can give that pitcher fertilizer i probably will um you're not supposed to fertilize the soil of these because that's what promotes them to grow pitchers because they get their nutrients from in the in the pitchers obviously from catching bugs so i know that i'm not supposed to fertilize inside this um soil so i haven't but yeah so that's gonna be him my one pitcher <laughs> pitcher plant he's just got that one at least it's a nice one it didn't come out deformed like the ones that came out before i think those weird ones came out in like the fall or something but yeah i guess that is going to be that all right so i guess that is going to be the end of this video i hope that you enjoyed hearing about my unwell plants hopefully they improve i will keep you guys posted on how they're all doing especially the el choco red of course my baby yeah it sucks, but it really is just a part of growing plants. Sometimes they go downhill. Ugh, another one that's not doing well is my varicosum, but I don't think I want to do anything to it right now. It just hasn't grown since I took it out of the IKEA greenhouse cabinet. And I've been filming my video about um, taking plants out of my cabinet for so long, like two months now, but I'm just waiting for all of the plants to put out new leaves so that I can see how they come out and everything so that I can give like a well-rounded video um but it just it is not growing and i'm kind of concerned about it but i'm just like hanging on and i don't want to go digging in the roots or anything just yet might just be taking its time we'll see but yeah anyways okay being too chatty um thank you so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it leave me a comment down below i would love to chat with you would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one bye Try